Welcome back everybody. High Tech Lab here. I got some more work done on my solar system. These are those 20 panels I showed in one of my previous videos sitting in the back of the truck. I built the racks and they are now up and running. Uh, as you can see, they are ground mounted on wood frame racks. Now one thing I want to mention is typically a wood framed rack is not quite desirable. It's better to use a metal rack that is perfectly designed and listed and approved. However, this is a portable system. And I say portable system because we're still working on building a warehouse. We're gonna build like a 4,000 square foot warehouse over here. And these panels are subject to move uh, at any point in time. So I didn't wanna build anything permanent yet because we're still trying to figure out what we got going on. Uh, ultimately, this whole off-grid system is going to be changing as soon as we build that warehouse. So that's that's the reason for the wood racks. Uh, the wiring's not quite dialed in yet. I'm still working on that. I just wanted to give you guys a little uh, show of what I've got going on. These are strings of four. Uh, they are at 150 volts open circuit uh, with the four in series, and that matches the maximum open voltage or open circuit voltage of the Outback controllers. I have five strings of four. And again, like I said, don't judge the wiring. It's all kind of temporary. Just proof of concept, make sure it's all working. Uh, the technical specifications on the panel are down here. As you can see, they are model SS245P-60. They're 245 watts, open circuit voltage 37 and a half volts. Voltage at Pmax is 30 and a half. 8.68 amps short circuit, 8.13 amps at power max. One thing I am going to do is get a combiner box, place it in the middle, uh, because these temporarily are not fused. Just again, proof of concept, make sure all these panels work good. These were used panels. I picked them up for 1300 bucks for the 20 uh, from a local seller. But yeah, that's what I've got going on. As you can see, two by four construction, frame this up. I used about six 14 foot two by fours per rack times five racks, that's 32 by fours. They were about six bucks a piece. I already had all the screws. I had the wire, I had the connectors. Um, so really it was quite cheap to build this. I mean, the 1300 bucks for the solar panels, it's a really good deal. Um, the biggest chunk of it, but I would say all in all with this whole system not counting the charge controllers that were up and running and, and being used I'd say right around two thousand dollars for I believe around five thousand watts of nominal capacity Temporarily the power comes in from this array through this one inch seal tight tubing and goes into this wireway that was already installed and set up in here uh, again, this one is seal tight will change when I get the combiner boxes and pretty much what the combiner box will be is it'll be in the middle and then I'll have essentially extension cords that go from each array to that combiner box and then I'll be running number six wire back into the building uh, because this is pushing right now right around 40 amps and that's right at the limit of the number eight wire I have and I may be adding a sixth group of four, so that would push me right at 50 amps, and once it goes through the MPPT charge controller, it would push me right to the 80 amp limit at 48 volts nominal of that charge controller. Some of you may be wondering what we're running. There's an AC unit on that RV that my parents are living in while we build the house. There's a hot tub over there that the excess power goes to and keeps hot. And then here in the utility slash electrical room, I just got done running laundry. Obviously right now is a very good production on solar day. Here inside the electrical room, I have an air conditioner running. Now this air conditioner is temporary. I'm gonna be installing this. This is the air conditioning that'll replace the one in that room. This is a Duotherm by Dometic air conditioner off of an RV. It's right around 14,000 BTUs, so it's pretty big for that room. But if we look here on the bottom, if I flip this over, you'll see I just need to cut out a square hole and I've already figured out the pin out for this uh, plug right here. So I have a neutral, a fan high, fan low, and compressor connection. And all I need to do is tie that into my PLC cabinet. And the way I'll configure it is I'll have a temperature probe on my analog input module, my PLC. So the PLC can then see temperature of the room It'll be able to know how much power is available. So if there's excess power, it can then use that to run this AC. If we hit a critical temperature in the room, it could do things like fire up the generator if there's not enough power and run this air conditioning unit. 
a lot of functionality I will add by making the thermostat within the PLC unit. And that's just another advantage of having a system as flexible as I do with that click PLC. So that'll be more efficient because this air conditioner is exhausting air and what happens is hot air gets pulled in from beneath the door which I left open so that doesn't help. But it's nice and cool in here keeping the equipment cool keeping the batteries cool. Now the next thing to upgrade is gonna be the batteries, but I haven't got there yet because I found the deal on the solar panels. I went ahead and took advantage of what was in front of me. So that'll be coming soon. But if we come over here to the charge controllers, this is 16 panels flat on one container that I already showed you guys. Those are producing 1,620 watts. And then right here, this is the controller with those other panels. It's flowing right now as you can see, but if I go in here on my Mate 3 and go into the current and voltage stats and go into the correct port, you can see my maximum output from port 2, which is this controller, is 3,770 watts at 1637 hours, which was just a few minutes ago. But this has been in float mode, so it's not really going to its peak production and the spa is up to 108 degrees so there's no need to continue heating that anymore so we're pretty much set there i have another spool of pv wire i'll be using to make those quote unquote extension cords but yeah we can go into our hmi panel and go on the battery current graph right now we're not really doing much of anything on the battery graph but if this were drawing or, or adding you'd see that shown on there and when the spa is turning on to heat to divert the excess power, it's using this inverter. This one's running 52% load right now. This is a 12 kilowatt inverter. And that's running this AC and the AC in my parents' RV. So all in all, system's running pretty awesome. I'm glad I got those solar panels in and you'll see more videos as I get things more dialed in and tuned up. Thanks for watching guys. This has been High Tech Lab. I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to comment, leave a thumbs up, and subscribe. Turn on the bell icon to see more videos from me because believe me, there is a lot of awesome coming soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.